Hello and welcome to another edition of the Punters Gag. We're looking ahead to some cracking racing once again uh, this week. We've got Group 1 action in France. We're also at Newbury Newmarket and Ripon in front of the ITV cameras. Jason Weaver has joined us as always. And Jason, of course, we are building up for fantastic days on the Knaves Mire at York. Yeah, and thankfully, um, unlike last weekend, we look like having perfect conditions. Um, we, we know that the, the track at York or the massive amount of money that they've put in regarding the surface um, drains incredibly well. But we look, touch wood, set fair for some decent weather. Added to that, remarkably, in the situation that everybody has been in coming out the other end of what everybody has been through, £70,000 per race for the meeting um, at, at this track is just a remarkable effort. Um, and I, um, I applaud everybody, the whole setup there um, at York. It's a, it's a great outfit. And they are the, the best race goers and fans, I think, in the country, aren't they? They're great to have them back on track as well. Yeah, there's a there's a lovely feel, um, you know, and and everybody enjoys it. Um, it, it it'll be it'll be great. It'll be great. Um, it was really strange seeing the likes of Love come in last year, and um, admittedly, Ryan Moore wasn't even smiling then. But even still, there was there was no crowd to enjoy it and see the horses. But this time round, we're ready. We're ready to give it a good push. Right, let's try and line the pockets of punters and ahead of the week ahead. We're going to start with it. We've got a look at the big races uh, on ITV throughout this weekend. Starting at uh, 2.20, newbie there, Jeffrey Freer. Uh, last year's winner, Hookham. Careful how you say that one. Uh, looking to go back to back. He's taking his form onto a new level this season, Jason. I don't think this is as good as renewed as it was last campaign either. No, I'd, I'd probably agree with that. Um, you know, there's, it's not a race that's loaded with pace. Probably the likes of Golden Pass will probably go forward, um, should set it up and make it a good gallop. It's a tidy ride for Louis Stewart, who's um, been been sort of battling in mid-division, if you like, as regarding the jockey's table. Three rows have not got a bad record. Recovery run down the bottom. Um, that was behind Nagano. Um, Nagano's now rated a triple-digit runner after Goodwood. That was Siskini, was back in second. Himself, he's taken a bit of a smack. I think he's been put up seven pounds in the in the ratings um so he he sits there sort of um a little bit of a sleeper down the bottom sleeping lions often too keen in the early stages pablo escobar has had plenty of chances red verdon he's off the back of a really good win over two miles at sandown but it was a bit of a softer race you go back up to the top i think who is stand out if i'm being honest he'll be the cornerstone for for many an accumulator throughout the weekend. And the thing is, he's won two of four this season. He's up in a, a rating of 114. I know he's got the three-pound penalty to carry, but he just should be too good. So, um, Hukum, I think, is going to take a world of beating back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I agree yeah, with that one. Uh, got a bit more of a wide-open contest a little later on in the Hungerford Stakes, uh, the Group 2, over seven furlongs. This is off at 330 it is that specialist trip, is it, Seven Furlong? Not quite got the toe for the sprinters. Not quite seen it out for the mile. Uh, Godolphin got a really strong hand in this one as well. Actually, Dubai, Al Hale, and so have Shadwell. Daniel would win a handicap last time. And Motor Kyle, of course, who destroyed them in the Bombay Cup two starts back. Yeah, um, real good turnout. Um, Muta KL, a dual Bunbury Cup winner. Um, seven furlongs is absolutely ideal for him. Dania. Sort of, um, I think it's tough to make all in those big handicaps like he did. So he must have had a good bit in the locker. Um, Alsa Hale, very, very talented, not straightforward. Goes with the hood, one of those who likes to travel up and behind his horses. Um, I suppose we're working our way down. Talk about the, the, the weather last weekend. Let's hope it stays dry because sacred right down the bottom. She's been a non-runner on a couple of occasions. Once at Ascot, once at Goodwood, owing to the fact of soft ground. Tactical was a good two-year-old. Return with that free handicap win. You could go on and on. Nando Parado, second at Campanelle last year over in um, France. And of course, was a um, Coventry winner himself. I think that the boys have got it woefully wrong. There are three runners for one ownership in here, and they're Dania, Mutakel, and Lanakash. Now, Lanakash won on his debut, 
He was second at Doncaster um, behind New Mandate. That form is rock solid. When he ran here at the back end at Newbury, it was nigh on bottomless ground. I mean, completely throw out. He went off a well-punted favourite and finished last. And I can tell you that from a jockey's point of view, I was looking at the entries. Ray Dawson was down to have six rides at Newmarket. Um, and he switched to go across to Newbury and ride this lad. He must have been showing something in the mornings. You know, it's, it's one of those that I'm taking a little bit on trust. He's returning to action. He's got an entry in the park stakes at Doncaster, which is all the Kazoo Park Stakes, also um, a Group 2 contest. I just think he's completely overlooked in the market and could cause a major upset. Lana Cash, hopefully, he's a big price as well. He'd be an each-way player. Yeah, it's interesting. When I remember Lana Cash, he was so unlucky in that Doncaster race. Then he bombed out, as you say, on soft ground. It is interesting. I mean, you look at the others. I mean, Jim Crowley would have had the choice. Can he get off Dan Yard? Next in line, Motor K, also impressive in the Bunbury Cup. This guy's got to go and do it. So maybe the jockey bookings aren't, you know, as, as negative as it looks in that sense. But, and when you look at the official ratings as well, I mean, if you're going strictly down that, you'd be on Motor KL, wouldn't you? He's rated 117. You've got um, Dania, who's gone up to 112. You know, there's very little between them. Lana Cash has the biggest upside to him. Three starts. One, we can forgive him, and he was a well-punted favourite, so he'd obviously been showing up. If there's any support for him whatsoever, off a rating of 110, we might just be underestimating him. Yeah, fingers crossed. I think I'll uh, row in with Lana Cash myself in the Hunger of Stakes. Just a quick uh, switch to Newmarket then, because I want to talk about this. I mean, it's not a, the greatest race of the day, but it is a novelty. The Grey Horse Handicap, 10 runners, uh, nature's finest coloured beasts uh, rolling down the July course, Jason. Now, the last four winners are back again. Case Keys won it twice uh, and uh, also My Style won it last year. They're back and no doubt they've been targeted at this race once again. Yeah, um, you've got, you got horses who are in flying form as well. Devil's Angel looked really, really good when producing a tidy change of gear to win last time. Um, had one or two of these in, be, in behind. Mitro's on fire has been flying. Georgie Bowen's an old regular. I wish Richard Farhi would hit a bit of form. That's a stable that has had a bit of a cold run, but it's one that you 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 underestimate at your peril, if you like. Um, now, for me, I think that um, my style was a little bit unlucky behind Devil's Angel last time, just slowly away in the early stages. I, I hate it when, if your horse is slowly away, it's then rushed up to get a position where you wanted to be because you can't ride two races. And that's what happened last time with my style. So slowly away, forced up into the pack, hit a bit of a flat spot and then stayed on again in the closing stages. If it goes a little bit smoother down at the staffing stalls, I think my style is being underestimated. Drawn in stall one, not going to get too much commotion from there. So just one side to concentrate on, if you like. Be over towards the, uh, no, sorry, be towards the, the stand side rail, but they've been coming up the centre. I think my style's overpriced for Eve Johnson, Horton and Georgia Doby. Yeah, I agree. That was my choice in that race as well. Quite like the chances of my style to uh, retain his tackle. Really good course form there as well. Right, we're going to head up to Ripon then, Jason, the beautiful garden race course up there in Yorkshire. And we've got, well, we've got the great St. Wilfred, we've got the consolation as well. The silver trophy will start with that lot. These are one of those races that you could run 20 times and get 20 different winners, aren't they? Well, Tim Easterby always has a big team. He's got four in the 310, the consolation race. There's a couple of your old favourites as well. Are we going to row in with the likes of Dan Zan or are we going for something new? Oh, I mean, yeah, there, there are plenty in here that I've, fo that, that I've followed regularly. Um, I thought in here you were trying to find, you were trying to find a runner that had been operating at a better, better level. We know all about them. Um, in the lineup. So I'm trying to gauge horses that I think are coming in in pretty decent form or for a good sprint divisions. Now, Paul Midgley is a team that I often um, follow in in the sprint division. He's got a, a couple that are um, drawn in different parts of the track. And that's probably the way I'll play it, if I'm being honest. You've got I'm a Dreamer, um, who's drawn in store number 12, and Ventura Express, who's drawn in one. So they could be on either side of the track, if you like, one far side, one stand side. Ventura Express, he ran in the Jump Jockeys um, Sprint up at 
the uh, York meeting previously, just was staying on in the closing stages. He's been altogether a much better horse since he's gone to Paul Midgley. So from the low numbers, I like him. I'm a dreamer, on the other hand. I thought he ran a cracker in this, well, actually in the big race of 86 last year. He wasn't beaten far. He's dropped all the way down to 80. He comes into the consolation. We've got a good jockey booking, PJ McDonald on board, and there's likely to be a bit of pace with him. Mythmaker 19. Um, Bossy Pop is drawn in 18. So I just feel that that might actually be the favoured part of the track. Um, Midgley, I think he's aimed him at this. He'd be a little bit disappointed that he's not in the big one, if you like, but he's certainly well handicapped on his best. 80 is underestimating him. 86, he ran fairly well in the big one last year. Yeah, interesting. And keep an eye on that one. It is a case of which side is the best, isn't it? With these, it's barely a ripping as well. And also handle the track with, with the ridges. We're five places on that and five places on the Great St. Wilford as well. Now, Timmy's to be saddled six of the 20 runners. I mean, we've rode him this year, likes of Manigordo. Uh, just another bottle we've rode in with uh, as well. Again, two, two, for, two against the field, one from each side once again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, didn't he run such a bad race the other day? Just another bottle. Never, ever at the races was a major disappointment for me. Surely he's better than that. Kevin Stott on board. They slapped the blinkers on first time, which would suggest that he's uh, not been producing his best. Um, so, look, he's, he's one who's drawn high. I will have a small each way bet on him from that part of the track. The main fancy is drawn low. Um, when I go down through all of them, some old favourites, like you mentioned, uh, a Staxton, Mr Wagyu was mightily impressive, wasn't he? And he's likely to be towards the top of the market. Lampang got himself in a muck sweat when we saw him last time. He was really agitated in the prelims. I don't know if it was more because he's um long journey down. You've also got a box from the stables at Goodwood up to the race course. Um, and that can sometimes unsettle them. So maybe just that journey up and then the walk and then down to the start. But he got himself in a terrible state, slowly away from the gates, and he still wasn't beaten that far, considering how much he gave away behind Mr. Wagyu. I think he's underestimated. I think he's better than a handicapper. And I don't think, you know, we, we know with all the good horses that Tim's got at the moment for this ownership, um, the King Power Racing, Winter Power and all those, I think this lad will be up in group company pretty soon. So from low, Lampang, tiny bit each way, just another bottle. There we are then, two against the field. And uh, the Gwaints are great to say it. Wilford even, yeah, Lampang was thought of at the second coming as a juvenile. who's highly thought of. Uh, right, the group one then on Sunday. We'll look at this uh, as well, Jason. This is an absolute cracker. Palace Pier missed the Sussex Stakes through injury. He is here, though. Over in France, looking to retain his title, he won last year, but what an opposition he's got. Victor Ladora, I know also that you uh, think a lot of Alpine star. Only second on her comeback at York. And, of course, the three-year-old of the season so far, Poetic Flair. Yeah, I mean, it's an absolute cracking contest. When you, you look through, what did you make? I want to ask you now, what did you make of the way that um, the superstar and Dittori was going up to the line at Ascot? And then he just seemed to falter momentarily. I just didn't, I wasn't sure um, whether that was some sort of problem um, or that was just that he was a little bit short. And I've been led to believe that he missed one or two pieces of work going in there. So still being able to win at that level, despite going in half cocked, if you like, was a, was a big, big performance. Of course, he won this last year. And he beat Alpine Star. Now, Alpine Star has not been in the same sort of form um, as she she was last year. Poetic Flair. A little bit disappointed with him, if I'm being honest. Um, at Goodwood, I certainly expected more, even though he was in the, the firing line and a little bit keen. Order of Australia also put in his place. Victor Ladorum, he beat Brentford Hope. And um, I know that you're a big fan of uh, Brentford Hope. Um, so little disappointed he didn't turn up the other day with what looked ideal conditions. However, Palace Pier, if he's fit and popping, he's just going to be too good. Yeah, you, look, so, uh, you, you did ask. I mean, that form isn't really working out either, the Queen Anne, isn't it? I mean, he was by far the best. I mean, she can only beat what you put in, in front of you as well. The form's taken a few knocks. And he probably wasn't the strongest renewal of that contest either. 
No, no, um, I, I'd agree with that. Um, but then I suppose I look back to the demolition at Newbury um, when he beat Lady Bothorpe. Lady Bothorpe has come out and give that a boost. I think I think early part of the year when he was popping, he was fantastic. He was fatter than me when he ran at Sandown on his return and still managed to win really well. So um, I'm going to forgive him winning when he was a little undercooked, if you like, and um, Gosden won't be sending him over there this time. He won't be travelling if he wasn't in top conditions. Remarkable, isn't it? When you think about the Trainers' Championship, you know, we always say, oh, you know, if it's one of the big guns on and Andrew Balding um, is being um, sort of hyped up as if he can knock either John Gosden or Aidan O'Brien off the mantle. Aidan O'Brien has the possibility of being champion trainer, not only in Ireland and England, but also in France this year as well. He's had a brilliant run over there. So, uh, yeah, say it quietly. He could be champion in those three racing jurisdictions. Well, in terms of that, it's a big week at your lots of money and off, as you say, Snowfall, St. Mark's Basilica uh, as well going for him. So we could have plenty of pounds on the names. We're going to try and uh, fill the punter's pockets as well ahead of your, Jason. So what would be the idea of a best bet this weekend to try and get us a few quid in the bank for York? Um, I think Hookham, um, he, he rates as a banker. If I had one at a bit of a price, Hookham, I think, will win, but I'll have to strap him in with something else. Um, obviously, the... The football kicks off as well, doesn't it? So the Premiership, there'll be loads of goals there. I'll have a, I'll have a little sneak around, see what I can find there. Um, and I think Lanakash is the wrong price. There are three runners we always talk about back in the outsider of two, i.e. first and second string. Well, he's likely to be third string. The fact that the rider switched from where he had a full book of rides at Newmarket to go down there, I, th I think he, he must have been showing something in the morning. I'll agree. Uh, I like Lana Cash. Uh, certainly worth an each for interest in the Hungerford Stakes. Thanks to Jason, as always, for joining us. He'll be with us every single day on the Naves Maya next week, looking ahead to the action at York. Fingers crossed, though, for a successful weekend. The Premier League is back, of course, whatever you're back in, the best of luck.